and good afternoon yes welcome to episode 678 and the topic today is um, stop shooting on yourself <laughs> and more ways that you um, abdicate your choices I don't remember what I said it was kind of a it was a deep title anyway so the title again is <laughs> I'll get back to get back to the second let me choose myself so you know who I am and what I'm about and why I do these talks every single day. Um, my, my name is Barry Selby, if you don't really know that, and I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business, because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which has informed my work with women. It also is what inspired these talks in the first place over two years ago, called, over two years ago, say it again, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. I've gotten to the point now where I've abbreviated them to MFTM, but that's the full title in case you're wondering. Um, the Facebook lives initially that go onto my business page on Facebook as well as my YouTube channel. I'll give you the links to all that at the back end. And so every day now for over two years I'm doing these talks. And today we're episode number 678. And the topic again today is stop shooting on yourself. More ways that you abdicate your choices. Yes, I remember the title. <laughs> so this actually is a, excuse me, she knows. This is actually a follow-up to, um, to what I talked about two years ago, um, which was The Power of I Can't, which was really one of the biggest choice abdication options you have, meaning that when you say I can't, you're pretty much erasing your ability to choose. And I gave you a bunch of stuff on that one anyway. So, come on, that, so that was 676, so go back and watch that broadcast for this one. This one is gonna be a few more things, including should, because as you may have guessed from the title, should is one of those other words that helps you, or I should say, that stops you having freedom of choice. And I've got a few more up my sleeve, and I may just do more today. I was, I was going to do them every day this week, but yesterday I got into a rather um, impassioned talk about being okay being single, when all your friends are saying to you, how come you're not in a relationship, or how come you're not married? So that was yesterday's talk. So I would skipped one, so I was going to do one every day, but it turned out that Monday which was two days ago, is six, episode 676 was about the, um, the, the power, the negative power of the phrase, I can't. And so today I'm doing a few more on the same theme as that, so I skipped today. So just, just know that I'm getting to the point that I was gonna get to on Monday today. So let's start with the word should. It's one of those words that we are habitually using in our language in lots of different places. And as a precursor, by the way, this will affect your relationships as well as your own life in all sorts of areas, not just in love, but also in business and everywhere else. Because when you use the word should, it generally has a weight of judgment included. A free bonus. <laughs> um, <it's laughs> judgment, I mean, should is one of those things where it's like, you know, you should do that, or I should do that, versus, well, I'm going to get the verse in a minute. But by saying that, you're basically saying, um, by doing that, you're in the right. If you don't do that, you're in the wrong. There's a judgment attached to it that creates a heaviness and also a lot of pressure. You know, to about, um, there's, a, there's a, I use the phrase, oh, sorry, I use the pun or the phrase in the title about don't shoot on yourself or stop shooting on yourself because it is like shooting on yourself. It's a negative, limited way of choosing to do things and it is eliminating your choices, meaning, that when you say that I should do something, you're making a pressure point, meaning that you, you, you must do it, basically, or that you'll be something wrong if you don't. It's kind of the unspoken part of should. A better way of saying that, which is actually the same thing as the super on, on um, Monday with the, with the frame I can't, is about making a choice. Because the reality is, and this is the thing, we are always, in every, every um, situation and circumstance, at a, point, at a point of choice, because we can choose to enjoy it or not enjoy it, a choice to participate or not participate, a choice to do something or not do something. Everything in life prevents, presents, excuse me, friends, presents us with a choice, and then we get to choose yes or no. But when you say, I can't do something, that closes off that ability to choose, when it's really a matter of I won't do something, because it's willingness to not do it, not the impossibility of doing it unless it really is a physical impossibility, like flying without a plane, for example. That was a bad example I used the other day. So when it comes to should, 
in the same context. It is a form of, cho of choice elimination, so diminishing it or advocating your choice points. Another way of doing it, instead of saying, um, I should do something, is I'd like to do something. And, the, and what you're saying is, I would like to do something. So should is pressure point, would is willingness. Again, same as the first point about saying I can't versus I will not, or I won't, or I choose not to. The same is true with should. I will, I, I would want to, or I would not like to. That gives you the power back. And the thing about choice points, which I talked about Monday briefly, is when you have choice, you have power. And if you've been feeling disempowered in your life, in the interactions you've had with your friends, with coworkers, with employers, with employees, with partners, in all different areas, one thing to be aware of is what language you've been using, how you've been phrasing what you say, so that you actually have more freedom to choose in your partnerships and in your relationships. This is freedom, my friends. This is a freedom opportunity, because by knowing that you're making a choice to say something that you will or won't do versus I can't, or I should, or I shouldn't, it gives you the freedom. When you start saying I can't do something, or I shouldn't do something, or I should, there's a pressure point of um, well, there's pressure being put on your choices that makes it limits the ability to choose I'm deciding if I want to give you another one today or I'll give you one tomorrow let me see I want to give you a few more today because this is, this, is this is a package deal so if you once you understand the, the power of eliminating the word should from your most of your languaging now, let me, one caveat. As I mentioned about the word can't, there are certain times when using the frame, phrase, I can't do something, is accurate because it's a physical impossibility, perhaps. But wherever there's another choice of saying, when I'm willing, I'd rather not do something, or I don't want to do something, or I'm not going to do something, that is when you're choosing to not do something versus can't. Same with should in a sense that you can make choices otherwise. However, there are times when saying should is kind of a pressure point that is relevant. You know, um, let me think. One that comes to mind as an option to play with is I should eat food once in a while. It's, it's, it's good for me. You, you Ideally, you'd like to eat food as well. But in the should in that context has a encouragement that is actually positive because you put it in a composite direction. And that's one of the things you can use this way is when you use these frames, these phrases, in a positive direction. Now, added to the can't and should, I'm going to throw another one into the mix for you, since you're one of the advanced students watching this, which is the, which is the phrase, I have to. This is one of these also self-inflicted pressure points, I'm using it that way intentionally, that makes us feel like we're begrudgingly needing to do something that we are in a place where we are being forced to, by our own choices, to do something. So when you say, I have to go do something, like I have to take out the garbage. Well, yes, taking the garbage is a good thing because it'll smell if you keep doing it, or you don't do it. And I'm using a very simple example here because the reality is this is a framing that applies to every area of your life. It could be something where I have to go to work today. Well, you don't actually have to go to work. However, going to work will be smart because you know that if you go to work, you get paid. Now, if you have a job you hate and you keep feeling like I have to go to work, I really don't want to go, but I have to go to work, that's a clue that perhaps there's something else calling your heart to do something different than the work you're doing, or there's something different you need to do at the office or at the place you go to work that will change the environment so you actually enjoy going to work. These phrases we use, can't, should, have to, are in some ways clues to how we feel about something. We tend to choose to do the things we love to do and choose not to do the things we don't want to do. Kind of simple, that's the way humans are. So sometimes we we'll use words in our phrasing like have to, should, can't, or can't if you're American. We'll actually use those words to somehow take the pressure off ourselves saying, well, it's not me, I just can't do it. Really? Because what you're actually doing is in a way disempowering yourself. By using those words in the languaging, you're taking your own power and putting it in a box and saying, well, you know what? I'm actually taking away my own power and say, I can't do that. Versus, you know what? In my power, I'm saying, no, I'm not going to do that. 
And have you feel the difference in that? But it's a vital difference in all your relationships, especially with yourself. And those, so, so that's there's three. So that's can't, should, have to. And the reason why I use have to is, is also part of that, that, that thing. It's because anything that takes you away from choice is a limitation. Now you can choose certainty, so it's not about, it's not about um, always having a plethora of choices. It's about making the choice yourself. When you say I have to do something, it's like somebody else told you you had to do it and you couldn't choose it to do anything differently. Like I have to take out the garbage. Well, yes, the garbage is going to stink up the house if you don't take it out at some point. But I would say you're choosing to do it rather than put up with the smell. So you have choice again. The have to languaging is a, another one of these elimination of choice, elimination of power, and elimination of freedom. So I'm advising you to watch these words in your language because when you take them out of your language and replace them with other words like liking to, wanting to, choosing to, you have your power back. And if there's any more I want to throw at you today just to keep you busy. Um, it's funny because I've had this um, unofficial label sometimes in my communication with my clients just to out myself where I've been kind of the language police. Um, because I've watched my clients time and time again say things that are not true because they've been lying to themselves by saying, well, I can't possibly have that. And it could be something simple as like, you know, I, I can't have the relationship I really dream of because I, don't, because I don't think I'm worthy of that. Well, you may not believe you're worthy of it. It doesn't mean you can't have that relationship because with some work and some support and coaching, which is what I do with my clients, that gets transformed. So those phrases, I tend to catch quickly in my conversation with clients because I'm watching how they are simply shooting themselves in the foot and really eliminating their own choices. I've done it myself for many years. I was, I was unaware of this for a long time. Thankfully, I had some great exposure to teachings that t taught me how to be conscious of my language. And there's a lot more besides that. I'm just throwing a few, I'm giving you three, well, one Monday, two today, three very simple examples you can practice with. This is like beginner steps, to be blunt. There's a lot more in there of framing and phrasing how you affirm your life. Then I'm going into more detail when I do it with my private clients. But I want to give you this to play with because these are simple things you can do in your languaging, in your written language and your spoken language, especially your inner language when you talk to yourself, that by taking this on, and I'm inviting you to do this, to watch the words you use in your statements, declarations, invitations, communications. If you use the word can't, the word have to, and the shoulds. Because if you take those out and replace them with real honest words, because those are not one of those honest words, you'll be, you may just start discovering that you're actually more, more filled up with power, more, more aligned, more fulfilled, and more free to choose what you really want. A lot of work with my clients is really giving the power of their choice back. Even though it's about relationships and about being whole and healed from past wounds, there's a lack, there's an, there's a um, opportunity to release any sense of suffering. In the past, in, in with, with some of my clients working with past wounds, there's an attachment to those past wounds that somehow is justifiable because they screwed up or something else happened because they judge themselves. And that, that trap, self-inflicted trap, is maintained a lot of times by the common language they use. You know, I can't love again because I screwed up in the past or whatever that framing is, it's not really true. But by affirming it, or I should say, <laughs> no, I won't use that term. I have another word I use for negative affirmations. But by, by disaffirming, if that's a word, um, by affirming negatively, they're maintaining a limitation in their way of living. If you're dealing with yourself, this is a clue to help you with that. It's a free gift, you're welcome. If you want to go deeper with that, I'll put a link in the comments so you can sign up for a discovery session with me because this may be a trap you're, only, you're actually not where you're walking into. The language you use is that powerful. Part of that also, and part of this reminder is that we also sometimes separate ourselves from our love, separate, separate ourselves from our beingness because we're running a rule book up here that cuts us off at the neck so we're not even connected to who we are. And that's not the way to be in healthy relationships with anybody. So I'm hoping that you'll take these words on as a opportunity, as a challenge, as an invitation to explore how your life could be different just by the words you use in your communications.
the power of the word is very real. And if you choose to use it, you will find yourself extremely, um, well, it's extremely, possibly surprised by the results. So I think I'll leave it there. I'm going to give you some, some insights to that. But again, I'll put a link in the comments for this conversation with me. Um, if you really want to find out more how to work with this and how to transform your own languaging in your relationships with yourself, with other people, romantically, business, or relationships. This is bigger stuff than a lot of people give, give, give credence to. You might find yourself having some puzzlement about why this is so important. But if you, try, if you watch your languaging, if you are become a witness to what you say, an observer to what you say, and catch those words as they come out, or catch those words as you think of them, and you change the languaging, you can actually change every single relationship you're in. You have that power. So again, eliminate, if you eliminate the words can't, have to, and should, those, that trifecta, there's a few more, but I'll talk about those tomorrow, maybe. We'll see. I, did, I promise on Monday didn't deliver till today, so bear with me. But having that understanding to take those words out of your, your conscious language and become more aware of what you're saying, actually making your language conscious and taking these words out of the, the language you use, that's actually a better way of putting it, you'll discover that you actually have more freedom in your life, more ability to maintain and attract what you want. And if you're looking for love in the wrong places, this may be one of the reasons why you're doing that. I think I'll leave it there. I appreciate you watching and being with me for this broadcast. It's one of those, not the most exciting one necessarily, but it's a fundamentally powerful way to transform your experience if you're willing to do it. As always, these are invitations, not declarations for you. These are just recommendations I can provide to offer you some guidance to make your love life more powerful, more effective, and more enjoyable. If you are feeling ready to do that deeper work, Again, I'll put the link in the comments. You can find me and reach out for this conversation. And check these words on. Watch the language you use. And be willing to transform this experience once and for all. This is not for the light heart. This is not for the faint of heart. Um, this is yeah, simple stuff, but it will change your life. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, thanks for being with me as, as always. This is my daily Facebook Live. Um, at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Watching the replay, maybe on my business page, which is um, barryselby.author. Or if you're watching my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to that channel. I'm looking to gain some more subscribers, so please do. There's a, there's a playlist on my YouTube channel called Messages from the Masculine. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby because I didn't say that. So with that, thank you for watching. Um, take these words to heart. They will change your life. It'll give you a choice back and give you more freedom in what you want and how you are and who you are. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.